What is going on guys, it's Ami and you're watching Dev Dreamer. Welcome back to lesson 47 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about timing events. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. All right then guys, so welcome back to lesson 47. So let's learn all about timing events. So sometimes we want to control when our function is executed. For example, we may want to invoke a function three seconds after the function has been triggered, or we might want our function to repeat every second. Well, we can do all that by using timing methods. Now, there are four timing methods that we can access, and those are set interval, set timeout, and then methods for clearing them, clear interval and clear timeout. Let's see how they all work. Let's start with the set timeout method. So set timeout allows us to invoke a function once after the set period of time. Now there's a few ways that we can use the set timeout method. We can say something like the following. So in our text editor, we're going to say set timeout. And this will take two arguments. The first is the function, and then the second is the amount of time. So for example, we can say something like function, we'll call this sub, there'll be no parameters, and this will simply console log subscribe. And then for the second argument, we need to specify in milliseconds the amount of time that we want to wait before this function executes. So here we'll say 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. So what this will do is it will invoke our function after three seconds once we save. So keep your eye on the console here. Let's save. We'll wait three seconds and we get our console log. We can also supply parameters in our set timeout method. So for our function, we'll say parameter of channel and let's just split this onto a new line now and for our console log we'll say subscribe to channel and then we can simply supply this as an argument so we'll say dev dreamer and if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button down below really does help me out let's go ahead and save we'll wait three seconds and we get subscribed to dev dreamer in the console now another thing that we can do is we can of course just supply our function as a reference, so we don't need to create the whole function in here. What we can do is we can just grab all this. We'll remove this argument from here now. Above up here, we'll paste our function in. And now down here, we can simply reference our function. So remember, we're not invoking the function here. We're simply providing a reference to this function. And of course here, sorry, we do need that argument in. And if we save, we wait three seconds, and we get subscribe to Dev Dreamer in the console. So that's how to use the set timeout method. Let's now learn about the clear timeout method, and this will basically clear or abort our set timeout method. Now the way this works is when we assign our set timeout method to a variable, so down here we'll just say let timer, we can then use this variable as a parameter for the clear timeout method, like so. So down here we can say clear timeout this time, and then as an argument, we'll say timer. So now if we save, we can wait all day long and the console will not return anything. So what's happening here is our set timeout method, which is stored in this timer variable, will never run because before the three seconds is up, our clear timeout method is invoked, canceling or clearing our set timeout. Now for this example, because we can't visually see what's going on, what I'll do is in our index.html file, I'll include a button and we'll just say stop timer. Okay, so there's our button. And now rather than doing this, we'll create a function. Let's call it clear. We'll have no parameters. And what this will do is it will run the clear timeout method. And once again, we're referencing our set timer method up here. And we'll also just say console.log clear timeout stopped the timer. And now down here, we'll say const btm, which is short for button, and then we'll use the DOM to target our button element. So document dot get element by ID. Just realize we haven't given this an ID. So we'll say ID equals btn. So in here, we can say btn. And now we'll add an event listen to this button, which will be a click. So when we click this, do something. And that something is going to be run this function here. So now that we've created this as a function, we can simply reference this here. Okay, so everything's set up now. Let's go ahead and save. And before our three seconds is up, I'll click this button. 
and we get clear timeout stopped at the timer. If we just save without clicking the button, you'll see we'll get three second wait and then we'll get our console log. So that's all about set timeout and clear timeout. As you can see, really, really cool. Now let's take a look at the set interval method. Now the great news here is that once we know how set timeout and clear timeout work, working with set interval and clear interval is going to be a breeze because their syntax is exactly the same. The only difference is what set interval does. So whereas set timeout will run the function after a delay of specified milliseconds, set interval will repeat the function over and over again for a specified amount of time. So let's just use this example and turn this into a set interval this time. Set interval, okay? Everything else can remain the same. So now if we save, after every three seconds, we'll get subscribe to DevDreamer logged to the console. Okay. And of course the final timing event, clear interval, works in the same way as clear timeout. So let's go ahead and update this. So we'll change this from clear timeout to clear interval now. And once again, everything else can remain the same. Let's put set interval in again. Okay, let's set this to one second now. So now if we save, we get subscribe to DevDreamer every second in the console. What we can do now, of course, is since we have our clear interval method here, we can simply click the stop timer button. And as you can see, we now stop this set interval method from running and we log clear interval stopped the timer. Okay guys, so that's all about timing events. Let's go ahead and summarize. So the window object gives us access to certain timing events that allow us to run functions after a delay or repeatedly after every X amount of seconds. We can use the set timeout method to run a function after a specified amount of time, or we can use set interval to invoke a function repeatedly after a given amount of time. And finally, as we've seen for both of those, we can use the clear timeout or clear interval methods to cancel or clear both timing events. So let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So for task number one, use the relevant timing event to display my name is first name after a delay of four seconds in the console. For task two, change your code to log the same phrase every second in the console, and this time use the function as a reference. And finally, for task number three, I want you to log the numbers one to 10 in the console with a space of one second in between each number. Create a function called count with parameters start and end, and then think about how you would increment the number by one and how you would check to see if the number is more than 10 so you know when to stop. Okay, so as always guys, hit pause, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one, we need to use the set timeout method and we'll create an anonymous function in here. We'll need to use a parameter of first name. And then inside our call block, we're simply console logging the statement, my name is, and then first name. Finally, we need to specify 4,000 milliseconds, which is going to be four seconds. And of course the argument that's going to be used for first name. So let's go ahead and save and let's see what we get. So we've got a four second wait, and then we get our statement log to the console. Okay, so that's task one. For task number two, we need to change the code to log the same phrase every second in the console, this time using the function as a reference. So all we need to do here is simply pull this function out. And here, since we're using it as a reference, we need to give this a name. So we'll call this my name. And now all that's left to do is to simply reference this in the arguments down here and change this to a thousand milliseconds, which is a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. Oh, of course, we need to change this to set interval, like so. Now let's go ahead and save. And we get the statement logged to the console every second. For the final task, we need to log the numbers one to 10 in the console with a space of a second in between each number. So for this one then, let's create a function called count. We need the parameters start and end, start and end. And then inside this, we need our set interval method. The interval is going to be a second, so we change this to a thousand. And what we're doing inside this is, first we're going to console log our start number. So console.log start down here, just to make a bit more sense out of this. We'll invoke this function. So start is going to be zero and we're gonna end on 10. So the first thing we do is we console log zero and then we need to check to see if our number is more than 10 and if it is, we need to clear this interval. 
So after this statement here, we can use a regular if else statement. So we're going to say if start is more than or equal to end, remember end is 10 down here, which is the argument we've supplied for end. So if that's true, then we want to clear interval. And now we need a reference to this function. So what we'll do is we'll store this in a variable called timer. Now we can reference timer down here. Okay, and then finally we need to say else, so if this isn't true, so if this statement isn't true, then we want to simply take start and increment it by one. Okay, so that should all be set up. Let's go ahead and save. And as you can see, we get the numbers zero to 10 logged to the console with a space of a second in between each one, and they should stop at 10 seconds. Cool. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to look at something called higher order functions. Now this is where our function game really steps up because we've covered beginner and intermediate level functions. We're now going to move on to advanced function concepts. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.